What's poppin' guys? Welcome to Steady State Summary number two, where we'll cover week two of the course. This video is going to include information on absorbance, fluorescence, and an explanation of the scientific process that applies inside and outside biochemistry. Everything that we know in biology, chemistry, biochemistry, and basically any science follows the scientific process. The discoveries that you will learn about in this course, and the discoveries that you will make yourselves, will follow this general scheme that was probably introduced to you in your middle school days. Whether it's generating hypotheses, collecting data, or interpreting results, Make sure to be clear about your scientific process to ensure that your data can add to the ever-growing field of biochemistry research. Below I've showed a Jablonski diagram that can be used to compare absorbance and fluorescence. For absorbance, when light enters a sample, it has the ability to excite electrons. This excitation does not last forever though, and as the electron returns to its original ground state, the energy is released as heat. Absorbance is directly related to the concentration of the substance, which is shown in Beer's Law where the absorbance is equal to the molar attenuation coefficient times the concentration of the substance times the path length. As the law explains, all of these things are proportional to the absorbance of a substance. If one variable goes up, so will the absorbance. On the right is a Jablonski diagram for fluorescence. As light enters into a sample, the excitation of an electron still occurs. However, unlike absorbance, the photon loses this energy to the electron, and thus a photon of less energy is released as light. This is a key difference between absorbance and fluorescence. Absorbance releases the energy as heat, and fluorescence releases the energy as light. For example, if a blue laser is shined into a sample, and a color of less energy, such as red or orange, is observed, this is fluorescence in action. Having a good idea of how fluorescence works from a wavelength and energy standpoint is important for biochemistry, and will certainly be applicable down the road, so understanding the general picture of this now will be a great help as we move through the course. As always, if you have any questions, ask me or any of the other TAs or Dr. Bernstein for some help. Stay easy.